That is crazy life. <laughs> it's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Okay guys, here's what we're doing now. We just got this all ready to go. It's got resin in it. And the cowling, as we laid up the single layer over the whole thing, there's a couple of places we got overlapped. But the very top of the cowling, we did all one piece, no overlap, and it was finish sanded perfectly. So when I put the pill ply on, I was hoping I could pull it tight enough to not have any cuts in the pill ply or uh, creases in it. And I got away with it. There's not even one single wrinkle in that pill ply. So it made a perfect finish. That just saves me a ton of time because now I can take this wet carbon, throw it on top, of the peel ply that was from doing the layer underneath on the mold and lay this on it and make the new part that has no micro in it at all. So this is going on the top, then we'll pull the peel ply, sand the overlap joints and we can pull more parts off the rest of it, but that will either, we'll have to wax that, attach parts and pull it. So you can see right here, the nice cut line. This is where the air drill goes, but um, super excited. All right, guys, I cannot be happier with how this is going. I've got about 20% of the front of this cowling sanded out, and uh, I am not even finding one spot where I'll even need a trace of filler. Just the resin that was left on top of the carbon is enough for me to blend it all out. So it is coming together so smooth. I think I got lucky. This is the best turnout I've ever had on a cowling. I got a lot more to sand. So I'm going to sand, I got to sand, sanding again, and I'm going to sand. But uh, we're going to finish getting all of it done perfect, pull whatever parts we decide to use, and uh, we'll put it all back together. So a lot more to go. I'm super pumped. <laughs> Let's get back to work. <laughs> Okay guys, I left off so many days of work because it was really boring. It was a lot of sanding. So I made all the different molds off the kind of Bondo and filler and pieces and duct tape and cardboard. And then I pulled all the pieces off and made my cowling. And uh, it's the biggest cowling I've ever made, for sure. This is even bigger than Draco's. The reason it's so big, actually it turned out really light too, is that the cowling actually goes back underneath the window. And the reason I did that, it just makes it easier to work on. I didn't think it made sense to come straight down off the window and make it hard to get in there. So that's why the cowling's so tall. I'm really happy with it. I got some cleanup to do. You can kind of see the inside there. Um, got a lot of little sanding, a little touch up. But, all intents and purposes, <laughs> I'm blown away. I'm going to throw it on the plane. I'm going to start marking out before I do fine tune sanding and split the cowling. I've got to put my lights in it, NACA for the air intake, a few more little things. We've got a lot to do. Super pumped. Long time coming, but we're done. <laughs> well, close. Okay, guys, I'm super pumped. This is coming together really good. So I spent a lot more time than I really would have liked to, but it's worth it. Figuring out all the angles that the aircraft can fly in a level flight attitude, a tail low attitude, and like any tail dragger, the lighting is always good for one or the other, rarely good for both. You set it up for level flight to land two wheel at night, um, it shines down the runway, and as soon as the tail goes down, the runway goes dark, or vice versa, you come in, and you're coming in to land three point, and you can't see the runway at all. So, I'm doing two sets of lights, and I calculated it all out. I've got two lights that will go here and here. I've got them positioned on the radius so that when I get them installed, they're going to be pointing left and slightly down, and right and slightly down. I got the angle deflection. These are supposed to be coming off right from the website. And then 
I've got them tipped so that the two blend in the middle, just overlapping a bit, but it'll give me really good peripheral view. But this is gonna be great for taxiing or coming in two point. But I'm coming in three point, I've got another light that's going down here, and it's gonna be great for level flight, looking at terrain below you. It's gonna light up kind of right outside your side windows, down deep, almost straight down and forward. But if you get into a flare, it'll rotate up and shine at the runway. So as you start the flare, the runway stays bright and it doesn't go dark on you. So it's transitional lighting. I'm super pumped, so I've got that lined up, ready to go. The other thing I need to do is I always want to be able to change my oil without dropping the cowling. I like to change my oil often. So what I'm doing right here in these yellow lines is I'm putting a huge removable inspection door. You can get up inside, inspect everything. The grills on the side here are removable. If I pull those off, I can get to about just about everything on the engine, pull the top cowling. I can just about do anything and not have to remove the lower cowling. So I'm just built this. I needed a NACA. It's going to go down here. And uh, I would have loved to have used one from Cub Crafters. It was really close. So what I did, you can see a Cub Crafters one on Mark's cowling here. His point straight almost up and I needed mine to go back for the clearances. So it's really easy, just make your own NACA. I was able to just splash it. You can just hand make your own. There's a online, you, you can find the curves you need to make the NACA work right. But what I did is I just laid this up and to get these tubes, I just got two inch aluminum pipe. You can wax them, temporarily put them in and mold right around them, which is what I did. And then to feather out the inside, I just put a little micro fill, blended a nice fill on that. I don't like to have uh, micro just left there. So after I bond this in, I'll lay up carbon, go right over that fill and right onto the removable belly pod. But uh, NACA's done, lights, NACA. And then the other thing I've got right down here by the exhaust, right here is my night vision camera. I tip this angle just to match the exit air of my exhaust pipes but also to put in my night vision camera right here that's pointed at the correct angle for all around forward and down view for night vision. So, um, and then my exhaust pipes are set back and I put a big air reveal around it. The slopes I have here are to accelerate the air that comes over, it jumps, catches the exit air of the exhaust and it'll create a big vacuum and suck air out of the cowling. So anyway, I have a lot to do, I'm super pumped. I don't know what time it is, maybe eight. So I'm gonna try and get all this done tonight. Cut it, bond it, glue in the NACA. So we've got lights, camera, NACA. I feel like I should say action. <laughs> Back to work. Okay guys, let me show what I've done. This around here. All right, so I've just taken the lights and I clear taped them and the NACA and I just put hot glue from this side to get them all held in place. So right now, this one sits almost perfectly flush. These are really close. They're sitting up about a 16th of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch protrusion on one area as the arc changes. So after I get the backside done and these set, I'll reshape the front of this carbon just a little bit to make sure those lights have no edge at all. So a little bit of body work after this, but it's just a trace. So I'm gonna get to work laying up carbon fiber on the inside make the step for the overlap of this removable door and the lights all at the same time. So let's get to work. All right, guys, let me show you what I'm gonna do here. Right here, I've put clear tape on this entire removable section and I've clear taped it. I actually ran the tape long right over top of this cut line I did. And then after I got the clear tape down so there's no wrinkles, it's perfectly smooth, took a razor blade and cut right through the seam line now I'm gonna lay up carbon fiber, about a four inch wide strip all the way around over top of this seam. It's only gonna to stick to the side that's carbon to carbon. It won't stick to the clear tape. Once that cures, I'll flip the cowling over. I left little quarter inch ticks all the way around. I'll cut them out from the backside and this entire inspection door and the NACA will come off as one set and go back on for maintenance. So um, we're ready to lay carbon. You can see the lights from this view. They're hot glued in from the front side. Of course, that hot glue will scrape out with a razor blade later, pop these back through this direction. Right now, they're all taped up so I can make a carbon fiber plate on this side. 
Once that's done, we'll pull the tape, install it more semi-permanent, and then we'll do body work on the front. So hope that all makes sense. Let's get to work. All right, guys, that was a lot more work. Sometimes it always is than you think, but I'm really happy with it. The lights, they just kind of snap right in. So I put a piece of black tape around the lens, covered the face of it, and then I microed and carboned it in place. And that way I could take a little rubber mallet, pop the light out, sand it back, and when the light goes in, it kind of snaps in and it can't twist or rock since I've got the angle set exactly where I want it. So you can kind of see how that finished. I just sanded it. I got some painting and touch up to do, but this cowling is getting really close. What we're gonna do now, I uh, cut this out, leaving little quarter inch ticks, laid up the backside, had clear tape on one side, not on the other, carbon fibered it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get a little screwdriver or blade, stick it underneath here, start to pry on it, and then cut each of these little quarter inch ticks and pop off my inspection door. But before I do that, I've got to go through and drill all my eighth inch holes for the Clayco that will automatically center it back up in this position perfectly so I don't accidentally drill it with it offset anywhere. So we'll go ahead and tape it off, put the Clico holes in, those will later become nut plates and the screws to mount this. Then we'll pop it off, trim the excess carbon that's sticking way further into this off and put it back together, add nut plates. Let's go to work. <laughs> gives just enough edge, the thickness of the cutter, gives just enough edge that after I go through and crack that edge nice and clean, and I crack this edge nice and clean, when you paint it and you have the thickness of the paint, you'll have just a hairline, perfect reveal all the way around. And then you can kind of see why we pre-drilled all these holes, because now all the holes are right here in this lip, all the way down, and every one of these will get a nut plate. All right, sorry to film how I did this, so I'll try and describe it best I can. The lights are still in here. The lights, because they're flat-faced in a multi-compounding curve areas here and here. Um, two of the edges I was able to get flush. The other two I just sat up about an eighth of an inch, which, I mean, you see it on most aircraft, but it kind of bothers me. So what I did is I left the light in. I put one layer of tape over top of it, cut the tape out perfect, spread a thin layer of micro around the two sides that the light was sticking out, and then layered two layers of carbon fiber with a hole cut out the exact size of the light. And I put that in and was able to push it just flush to the light. And then I put one more layer over top of the light, and now I'll spread and put a piece of peel ply on that. After that dries up, I can take a palm sander, set it right on this flat surface of the light. You can kind of see the circle in there. That is the light right there. And I'll take a palm sander and just touch it and it'll burn through that one layer, 10,000 thick of carbon fiber. And now everything will be perfectly radiused off of that light and you won't see an edge sticking out. So um, it's starting to get hot, so I better get back to work. You guys know the drill. All right, guys, getting closer got it uh, all taped off. My parting line for the upper and lower cowling. I've cut between each of the ticks. And uh, I don't know, lots more to go after that. I don't even know what to say. The other thing I've done is I split the, the cowling line. Instead of coming through the front of the air intakes, I've turned it, split it over the top, and then come down through the middle. So the top cowling comes off this section out and all of this stays. The reason for that is I'm gonna make an airtight pressurized upper deck plenum on the engine. And it's a lot easier if I leave this all connected on the front and then I make a continuation of the carbon fiber inside to the upper deck plenum with some nice ramps. But it allows me to put a rubberized boot that clamps this edge to the next interior part so as the engine moves from the cowling there's a rubberized connection 
but I can make it perfectly airtight. So I can take the top cowling off and get to that boot that's connecting this hole to the upper deck plenum. Hope that makes sense. It will soon. Let's get back at it. It's like nails on a chalkboard to me. All right, so I've just put duct tape on the outside of the cowling right here, used orange torque seal paint, daubed in all the holes, then razor bladed it off and scraped it really clean because if you leave kind of a, a film around every hole, the carbon won't stick there as well. So I use a razor blade to just scratch every little bit off. Now what that's gonna allow me to do is put my last stiffening layer of carbon fiber to layer up the edge of the cowling to make the edge stronger and thicker so that it never cracks where the screws are. Oftentimes cowlings will be the same thickness all the way around. And you want it really lightweight in the middle, but the edges is where you get all the stress of the screws. So they're always cracking right by the screws. So I thicken up the edge a lot and make it, you know, virtually unbreakable, but it certainly will never crack. But uh, these orange dots are so that I can now lay up the extra layers of carbon to build up the thickness on the edge. Then I'll pull the tape off and there'll be an orange dot on the backside that I can see to now drill back through the new layers of carbon on this side. Otherwise, the holes would disappear and they wouldn't line up with the holes that are already in the aircraft on the pairing side. So I've got this ready. I'm gonna lay up the seam for the split of the upper and lower cowling and the thickening of the edges of the cowling. So let's get to work. I'm about ready to drill all the holes. The layup's done on the back side so I can separate the upper and lower cowling. This is just such a dumb little trick. No one needs to know how to drill holes. <laughs> it's something I use when drilling carbon. A lot of times you can't use a center punch like you can on aluminum and sometimes the bit wants to wander and then you get screws on planes and it drives me nuts when I see them moving up and down. Um, so I put tape and instead of doing one piece of tape, I put tape on both sides centering where I'm going to drill my hole and then the bit just wants to find its way. As soon as it drills, it drops down into the slot and just helps you line up. I know it's a dumb tip, but it's also to measure it because I'm able to put a half inch tape line right down the, the seam or the crack of my cut. And then by putting a half inch tape and another half inch tape, I have the exact offset I want so the screw isn't going up and down as well. So let's drill some holes, split the cowling back to work. We've got all the holes drilled out, so I'm ready to split the cowling. It's already been pre-cut. There's little quarter inch ticks all the way down it. So I'm gonna put some spreaders in between and gently put a teeny bit of pressure and then kind of lift apart the area that's already been cut and then cut the tick out which we'll is a multi-tool, but in our shop, we call it the cheeker cheeker. And there's no real reason for it other than it goes cheeker 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 cheeker. cheeker, cheeker, cheeker. <laughs> it's our cheeker, grab the cheeker cheeker tool. So the cheeker cheeker tool is gonna cut this out. So let's get to work. <laughs> cheeker cheeker. We have so much more work to do. I'm trying to break this down. So many of you have asked to show more of the details about some of the builds. So this cowling is gonna have another video or two to get it done. I've still got to make an airtight pressurized plenum system. I wanna make a cold air intake, intake filtered system into the engine. I still need to add two more exit air outlets. The grills that are on the Cub Crafters cowling is enough for four cylinders, certainly not enough for eight. So even though I've got a belly flap, cow flap, belly flap, that is a huge amount of air, I still need to add more air outlets to the side of the cowling. I'm gonna talk more about that in a later video, how much air in, how much more, more air out, what that ratio looks like, and how that changes with airspeed. I need to talk, go more into how I make a connection from the inlet holes that are oversized that blend up to get the most air to the back of the cylinder. How I tie those together with an airtight rubberized seal. I also am going to do 
Inside my pressurized air plenum, a funnel built in for putting oil in. So if you ever need to put oil in the engine, you don't have to put a big funnel in there. It's all going to be built in and integrated. So, oh my gosh, I have a lot more to do on this cowling and a pressurized plenum and a cold air intake. So I hope you guys come back for the next video. I'm going to try and show all of it to you. And then as fast as we can, get it ready, get it painted, get it cowled up and go drive it around the airport again. You guys know the drill. I'm going to get back to work.